Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is called Flute of the Gods. It was written by Phil Anderson and Alan Carey, and it's part of the Seeds of Terror collection from the Miskatonic Repository. Our game master is David Gassaway, and this is a one-shot. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. David? Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's a lovely New York day in late June of 1922. The uh, train ride from New York City up the Hudson River to the town of Kingston is a little less than two hours. Uh, some of you might be acquainted with each other, all being uh, very successful young flute players. But none of you know each other particularly well, and you probably didn't see each other on the full train. But there's a limousine waiting to take you to the home of August Dreyer, empresario, known as the maestro. And so in the extremely comfortable back of a very shiny Rolls limousine, you have the opportunity to introduce yourself. It's going to be another 20 minutes or so that it takes for the limousine to deliver you to the home. Um, so why don't you get acquainted in the back of the limo? Mm. Oh, uh, that was uh, how I made it back from the Western Front, you know, of course, was uh, a little bit of luck. And so uh, after that, I decided to start playing the the flute much more serious and i'm just really excited to be going up here uh oh uh woods Ro robert woods but uh, 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 of course monsieur um you... it's it sounds like a very uh exciting turn of turn of events so you're saying you were in the war yes 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 i was it's a wonder your eardrums have survived uh to be able to play music, you have to be able to hear very well. Oh, I, I can. I, I, uh, I wore uh, ear ear protections. Uh, some of my uh, compadre socks. They they weren't needing them anymore. Ah, uh, well, you never know. It, uh, the damage to the ear can be quite uh, imperceptible at first, but it will definitely mm. affect your uh, overall performance. Uh, I am uh, Simon de Marco. And I have been playing since I was three years old. Ruby Rafik. Um, I have uh, started my career in Quebec and have played in countertalls all across the, the world. I can only hope that this is the start of a new chapter for me. Hmm. I'm, oh. um, I'm Allison. I'm pleased to meet all of you. I, uh, I, I, th I think we're all very talented musicians here, and I'm excited to see what happens. As am I. It is very nice to meet you all. I am Alex Hellman. Uh, I assume a flutist like yourselves. In fact, you all have similar cases. So in case you thought you were going to be in a, a mixed ensemble, it's evident that that's not the case. Yes, uh, let's uh, say you're probably not quite like ourselves. Well, we all know of August Dreyer, and perhaps maybe some of us know more than others. Hmm. Not as much as I would like, but I know enough. It's probably Everybody's... like all maestros. He eats small children for breakfast. <laughs> He's yeah. sort of a kingmaker, though, in the... In the uh... In the musical world? Yes, he has a great deal of power. Of course, of course. And uh, how do I put this delicately? He has not required certain services from his female, from his female flautist. What, what are you saying? Oh, you know what I mean, Mr. DeMarco. Those are very uh, dangerous accusations, are mm. they not? Well, let me just, having seen many of my fellow, my, my sisters 
career is derailed from refusing the wrong man. Well, well. I, I, I respect that he will be choosing the best flautist, not the best flautist in bed. Did any of you receive a piece of work to practice beforehand? No, I assume it'll be no. cold, uh, cold uh, rehearsal. What are you going to play? Do you have any particular things you are good at? I stick to the classics. However, I'm more intrigued by the rumors about Herr Dreyer. There are many rumors. Most are most are complete. Uh, how you say bullshit? We've all heard that he has made a deal with the devil. This I do not believe. However, it is possible that he has written a piece that no flautist can play, and this I plan to discover. Ah, mm. uh, I could write a piece that no flautist could play because I know how to play a flute. And I could just make things that you can't play. Yeah, make make the notes so low enough and the flute can't reach those notes. <laughs> I think that's a bit of an over literal interpretation of what he was saying, don't you think? Just a just a tad, yes. What what I'd be curious to know what you would consider one of the most difficult places for for a flautist to play. Mm. There are certainly some interesting ones out there, but uh, I've always found it to be at least somewhat interesting. Uh, the Queen of the Night aria, the fl the flute part for that. Mm. When you're trying to uh, over, when you're trying to over, uh, over, um, be, oh my God, when you're trying to be heard over a so a soprano in the in the rafters. Well. <laughs> I would say possibly a Ranzatala Torka from uh, Mozart is a rather difficult, ah, uh, dexterous. Yes. Uh, one must uh, hang, uh, finger very quickly and not oh. miss a note or it will sound very strange. But I'm surprised that none of you would think that the magic flute would, would not have uh, difficult flute parts. Mm. The Rimsky-Korsakov Flight of the Bumblebee. Absolute perfection. Uh, very similar, yes. Except it's a lot of the same repetitious. But that is, that is the entire point. It's a bumblebee. They're not going to just, you know, be doing arpeggios when they're putting honey in the comb. As the uh, sun lowers, reddening in the west, uh, you have driven through the outskirts of Kingston and on a winding hilly road, very heavily wooded, when you pull up in front of a handsome Victorian home. Mansion might be a little strong, but it's a it's a very nice looking place. Uh, and in fact, the drive, uh, it's the gravel drive away from the road is, you know, a couple of minutes long. So Herr Dreyer, Dreyer uh, likes his privacy. Um, as the chauffeur pulls uh, up to the house, a uh, 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 fellow in formal attire opens the front door and comes down to meet the vehicle. Uh, and uh, he, in fact, if you don't open the door first, he will open it and say, welcome. I see five of you. Very good. I'm Stevens, the maestro's uh, man's man. Um, if you'll uh, take your things inside, I'll show you to a, a room where you can prepare yourself. I've Set up a cold supper for you. I know it's been a long journey. Please follow me. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Uh, and he uh, leads you through the, the double doors into a rather handsome uh, high-ceilinged hallway and then off to a door on the left mm -hmm. uh, into uh, Herr uh, Dreyer's um, library. Uh, it's a substantial wood-paneled room. Uh, built-in shelves, thousands of volumes, uh, some like, and also there's a there there's a there's a young woman also in uh, serpent garb, dark-eyed and slight, and she's uh, putting out uh, carafes of hot coffee and tea, and on the table there's an array of 
you know, small sandwiches and other convenient type of foodstuffs. Hmm. Um, uh, Stevens says, uh, now that you've arrived, I'll um, send uh, uh, Mr. Dreyer's assistant, Miss Dewhurst, to see you and uh, inform you of what uh, what you should, how you might prepare. Um, I have to prepare for this evening's guest, if you'll excuse me. Uh, if you need anything at all, and there's no one in here, uh, and he indicates a, 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 a bell next to the door and a little silver box, so, you know, uh, staff will come and assist you with anything you need if you press this. Very good. Mm. Uh, Miss Rafik, you should probably consider uh, the powder room. Ah, uh, yes, of course. I sort of stretch a little bit. I can't ha I can't present myself in front of uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dreyer with a shiny nose, no? No, 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 no. No. At which point I sashay off to the powder room to powder my nose and refresh, my refresh myself a, a little bit. When she walks out, I kind of go, I've heard she likes the powder for the nose. Uh, perhaps, Miss, Miss uh, Johansson, you can join her. You're looking a little peaked. Um, yeah, that'll, that'll probably be fine. You, you notice that, um, Allison makes a sort of suspicious scanning of your face as she leaves. Hmm. Intrigued. Good. Um, so the, uh, foodstuffs are, um, you know, nicely considered, uh, the, um, the, again, the 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 uh, bookshelves are full. There's a globe. There's all that sort of you know, rich intellectual uh, appurtenances about. Uh, there's also um, next to one of the windows. There's a, a small reading desk with a chair, and some books out on it. Uh, there isn't a lot of musical paraphernalia in here. Huh. I suppose when you are uh, performing all the time, you get a little tired of it at home. And maybe has his own conservatory that he does his uh, work in. Oh, what, what is the uh, genre of the books that are kind of out or the topics? Uh, the books that are on that reading table are uh, rather esoteric. There's something called Discourses on Primal Chaos. Uh, which uh, is very uh, by a, a German or Dutch person of some sort, uh, dense, something called a monograph on the nature of higher powers, whose author is just D. Hmm. Mr. Woods, you uh, you read? Uh, I do, but uh, not of... Uh this uh theoretical uh topics that apparently these books are about well, what sort of what sort of things do you read uh, i perform for more on uh history of uh the 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 united kingdom's government really um would seem rather difficult to uh to divide your time between reading and uh, practicing oh um, you Oh, I, I've been, I've never had an issue with uh with multitasking uh there, uh, DeMarco. No, I've heard that from a lot of people who claim multitasking. I've heard others say it's not possible, but uh, well. do you read? Well, do you read? Oh, I practice. I practice and practice and practice. Mm -hmm. My normal routine is about eight hours a day of practicing. Well, that's you know, how one, nice. that's how one hones the. Uh, uh, the finer nuances of the music. But Mr. Here. DeMarco, you know, as I say, all work and no play makes Simon a dull boy. Yes, we've, um, I've heard some things about your playing. Have, has it gotten you into trouble a number of times in the past? And I take off my very fancy spectacles and I begin to polish them with a nice rag. Not since I have discovered the power of the spectacle. It has changed my life and it will take me to the top. 
Some of us, I say, get our spectacle in different, in much more different ways, I say, as I sashay back into the room. Mm. Um, while I was in the powder room, by the way, I took a very surreptitious sniff of Miss Johansson to see what was I smelling the alcoholic, was I imagining the alcoholic fumes on her clothes? But uh, I suppose, um, I suppose you've all enjoyed some of the, the gustatory delights. Some of us have a bit of a, well, shall we say, troubled relationship with the bottle. Mm. Mm. Not, none of us here, I assure you. Oh, good, good, yes. Then what are you talking about? Oh, I just mean that, well, it's not exactly, it's not exactly old news that, uh, you know, uh, some of us have a bit of a vice when it comes to certain uh, speakeasy products, no? What is a speakeasy? Oh, one of those illegal saloons, you know. It, uh, well, this, this barbaric country has banned alcohol. But, of course, I've always had my... Uh, I've always had a very spirit of temperance about me, not like some people, but none of whom are in this room at the moment. The, the, the United States hasn't exactly banned alcohol. They've banned the selling and purchase of it. But uh, people like... Uh, like Mr. Dreyer, I'm sure he has a huge cellar filled with it that uh, he shares with his guests. Oh, I'm oh, I'm I'm most certain of that. We just would need to make sure that. Uh, oh, I don't wish to be so uh, cross and and say an, a name out loud, but we wouldn't want uh, Miss Johansson to overindulge, shall we say? Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Well. On that bombshell, the library door opens and a young woman appears. Uh, Miss Dewhurst introduces herself. She's wearing a nicely tailored lady's suit. Uh, she has uh, neatly pinned back brown hair. Uh, she inquires about your uh, journey and if you are refreshed and uh, says that... Uh, uh, Mr. Dreyer will meet you in the music room in a little while, if you'd follow me. Excellent. Very good. Ah, uh, bon. So, uh, out back into the great hall and directly across it, uh, uh, she opens another door. Um, again, heavily wooden paneled inside is uh, August Dreyer's music room. Um, it's uh, not as lush looking as the library, but it is uh, full of fascinating detail. There are, uh, the walls have uh, many uh, pa painted sketches and drawings and photographs of notable people, mostly musicians. Uh, and there are also uh, mounted uh, instruments on the walls, many of them uh, antique. Um, there are some, you know, some dark wood glass cases and, mm. uh, uh, you know, there are uh, straight-backed chairs and the tall, thin windows look out onto the edge of the garden and the forest beyond. Allison stumbles in from having been, she says, oh, um, I think I stayed a bit too long in the powder room, but I, I have found everyone. Oh, ah. Welcome back. Very yes. good, very good. Dewhurst says, uh, very sorry, Mr. Johansson, to have uh, left you behind. No worries, well, it was completely my mistake. We're all uh, we're all gathered together now. I, and 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 Ms. Johansson, you are you you were sated. You don't need uh, anything further in terms of uh, oh, absolutely refreshment. You're good. Um, uh, I uh, if you if you look over at this case. She says, uh, this is the uh, initial page of the piece with which you will be uh, competing, for lack of a, a better, gentler word. Um, I have photostats for you to hold, but this is the original. And she indicates a, a glass case uh, with a 
piece of vellum inside it, uh, mm -hmm. sheet music. The Ascension to Court. Mm. Looks uh, simple enough. The, yes, uh, very much so. The notation obviously is is quite uh, early, and uh, so there are no indications of um, you know certain qualities of, of pitch and pace and so on. Uh, Mr. Dreyer acquired this some years ago. It's it's the authorship is unknown. Uh, the piece appears to be a unique representative. It's a, it, it, the entire piece is longer than this, but this uh, initial page is what mm -hmm. you'll be uh, practicing. Uh, we have, we'll give you a, approximately an hour to uh, look at and consider it, uh, consider your approach, and then uh, you will individually uh, uh, play for Mr. Dreyer. Uh, and um, if you'll have a look at this other case. The central prize is this, uh, oh. Die Goetheflöte, or Lute of the Gods. Um, this uh, ivory flute is, uh, as far as Mr. Dreyer has been able to discern, completely unique, quite ancient, uh, priceless, really. Um, and uh, that is uh, that is up for uh, winning uh, based on your interpretation of the ascension piece. Nice. Does uh, can you tell us some history of the ascension piece? Where it came from? Uh... Uh, it, it 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 was uh, found in the ruins of a British monastery. Uh, there were there was not sufficient other written material to date it very precisely. It's unsigned, of course. The uh, full piece is uh, is uh, nine pages long. Mm -hmm. This introductory piece sets uh, sets it up tonally, as I understand. I'm yes. myself not a musician. Oh. it's interesting that it uh, it's written with uh, rectangular quavers. Um, I would guess Gregorian chant even uh, at a glance, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see. That's difficult because they didn't they didn't have the concepts of uh, you know uh, uh, semi quavers and and uh, the semi semi demi quavers. They just memorized how they were supposed to sing it. There also seems to be no attention to meter or time signature. That's the same. Oh. Yes, it's yes. These things were once left quite ambiguous. Yeah, this is right at the beginnings of of notation, proper notation. Yes, of course. Really interesting. Uh, did you mention before? I'm not, I don't quite remember if I heard, but where precisely this was found? Uh, I I don't know the location. It, it was a, it was found in the ruins of an English monastery. Ah. Uh, I don't know what then. part of England precisely, um, or necessarily the the age of the monastery, um, but it it definitely the 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 uh, vellum is aged up to suggest something in the c central medieval era, mm. I believe. Mm. Inks are natural, oak gall, and so Roman on. Roman Catholic at the time, not uh, yes, not Anglican. not Anglican, not then. Very interesting. I should like to see the entire piece. Mm. Well, yeah. the winner of the competition will be performing the entire piece at the soiree later this evening. Oh. Oh, mm. oh and ah. yes, thank you for reminding me. So each of you, and she hands out, there, she has photostatic copies, so black uh, and white on heavy paper. Of the uh, entire thing. Of the of just this page. Of just this of just, page. Of just the front page. Danke schön. Um, so, uh, I'll leave you to consider this. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dreyer is still preparing, but he'll introduce himself to you uh, shortly um, and and answer any further questions you might have. Does There's he also not, was, sorry. Does he not wish us to practice first, or simply on the fly? No, uh, uh, you know the uh, the competition will be in approximately an hour, just under an hour now. So you have time to consider it. Um, and and I, I, he may have further instructions, but uh, I was just to sort of you know arrange for you to have a look at things. Uh, but just one last question: 
I'm, am I to assume this is is this is in C major since we have no indication otherwise? I I I don't know that I don't but perhaps uh, Mr. Dyer will have uh, an idea about that. I don't know that those terms are quite applicable to uh, composition of the state. But I again, it's not. I'm I manage mundane affairs for the maestro. Of course, of course. Uh, he's the he's the genius, and I keep uh, I make sure the chauffeur gets paid. Well, yeah. we, we won't keep you then, my friend. Based on the uh, based on the time period and the concept of the uh, the Gregorian chant, I would say it should be in a high high C register, um, and played rather quickly mm -hmm. through. Uh, there's no words, so we don't know what the original words were that went with it, but. Yeah, it's just going to be quite beautiful yeah, if, if played. Uh, played, uh, And, you know, they, they had to fill the church with sounds, so rather loudly it should probably also be played. A cappella, we, yes? Well, nobody's singing. Yes. Well, of yeah. course, but in that same idea. Is there I do. I, I get out my flute and start just uh, kind of practice fingering the notes of the thing but not actually play it yet is there a window in this room yes there are a couple of tall thin windows facing a has the time of day changed considerably or um I, you've probably been here you know assuming that you snacked a bit for 40 minutes it's because it's very hilly the, it gets dim well before Sooner, actual sunset. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's it looks dusky outside and it's forested, so it's not bright out. And I see even the faint indication of stars. Uh, no, it's it, the, the, the ground is darker than the sky at this point because, again, of hills. Um, uh, within an hour, though, before the anticipated competition there might be at least the first i mean you're far from light pollution and it's clear so well um, i think we all better get to it of course of Indeed. course i don't want to bother any of you so I, I i assume we'll all try to find spaces as far away from each other as possible merci merci at which point i sort of find myself a, a little spot over in the corner and i've got the my little daguerreotype in front of me as I'm sort of humming the melody a little bit, sort of know what it's supposed to sound like in my head before I start trying to pipe it on the flute. And as you guys sort of, uh, you know, consider the thing and part a little bit, but before Allison goes out into the hall to return to the library or find another more secretive place to, uh, to rehearse, uh, the maestro himself appears. Uh, he swings ah. the door open rather grandly and enters and says, my guests, you are very welcome. I'm so glad you could come. I'm very excited uh, for the competition this evening. Ah, thank you. And an honor he, to even be in your presence. Thank you for having us, sir. You are very kind. Uh, you have all, uh, you may all, of course, be considered already have having won in that you are the five finest Young flautists, I could my agents could uncover uh, for Amazing this occasion. Uh, and he comes in and offers he offers his left hand because his right lower arm is is not present. His jacket mm. and shirt are neatly pinned up to the top, and he offers his left hand in a sort of you know that sort of gesture um, mm -hmm. to each of you in turn. He says, "I see you are already." Considering the ascension, uh, you can see already that it is a complex and unusual piece. Yes, it is. Is, is the uh, the other is the rest of it as uh, complex, or is it more of a uh, at the beginning complex, or does it? It it only mounts in. Oh. Uh, in feeling and complexity both and of course you understand because of its age and the circumstances that these notes what what was written yes is just the the skeleton yes it is a summons 
uh, it's a call to you as musicians, as interpreters, as creative oh. artists, oh, to goodness. find within yourself the actual sounds and music that these just indicate, they sketch out. I see, I see. Of course. Hmm. So I, I uh, we were told uh, by uh, by Miss Dewhurst that this was uh, f found found in England uh, under a monastery. Where did did you hear about it from an auction or? Uh... Uh, it was uh, it was uh, found in the Somerset region. Uh, in in uh, 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 it was uh, the monastery was ruined so long ago that it was uncovered in modern times. Wow, um, and so most much of it was merely earthed, earthen, but uh, this remarkable document was in, uh, encased in a, in a in a wooden desk that had been flattened, and the object within was beautifully preserved to our good fortune. It spent some years in uh, Europe between collectors and dealers before it came to my attention. And what about the Gotha floater? Is it not the most magnificent thing? It Wait is. until you hear the sounds that it makes. There's there's no instrument I have ever known that can compare. Um, and it, we shall hear it this evening after one of you competes and wins the right to take it and uh, play. Oh. And we shall hear its tone. Uh, oh. As I'm sort of pacing around the case where the Grote Flotter is, um, from do I see where the where the where the mouthpiece is? Because I see the, the the finger holes, but on the photo I didn't really see where the where the mouth hole is. Uh, it's uh, uh, yeah, you can you can see with the the uh, it's it's un, it's the configuration is unusual. It's not like a modern flute, but it's it's evident to you that the hollow on the wider end is where was what you blow over. It looks okay. like you play it this way, not this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and while you're while you're inspecting it, uh, do you have? How are you for appraisal? Uh, not terrible. I could probably just do a quick roll. Let's let's see yeah. which let's see what happens. Uh, ooh, pass. Good. You know. You're not sure how old this thing is, and it, the configuration is very unusual. But you're you're just certain in your bones that Miss Dewhurst was mistaken, and that that's not ivory. You think it's probably bone. Okay. Um, for, but for if what it, it's worth, yeah. If but as one thinks of it, you know what is ivory, but uh, but a an animal's teeth. Which can be, can be considered bone anyway. Something to have teeth that large to make such a thing. A, a ivory. Ivory is a good guess. Um, but no, I, I wouldn't say you so. wouldn't mm -hmm. you suggest then that it's it's uh, Asian? And where would you have a, an animal large enough to carve? A bone flute of that size, other than mm, depending on the animal, if it has a large enough leg, you probably Africa? get the a... Africa, maybe Africa, it's... Asia. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, you know, ivory was traded like other commodities sure. in the ancient sure. world. So, uh, and uh, and also the flute is, you know, it's only yeah, roughly the size of, I guess, a long. You know, it's it's like a recorder, like, like a recorder. Yeah, yes. like yeah. a recorder. I mean, the recorders can be four feet long as well. Yeah, sure. They have so, a I mean, huge like just, range. But just as an example, I'm just using this as an example. Like you probably could have gotten that out of like a cow's thigh bone or something. It's oh, doable. easily, easily. Or a human's thigh bone, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I must um, begin uh, researching this uh, uh, in my mind and playing mm -hmm. it and. After yes. um, after you say a human's bone, uh, Allison looks at you daggers suddenly and takes a step back away from you. Hmm. 
Uh, I understand that you have traveled. I hope you have uh, had refreshments. Um, oh, and yes. I, there, there is, of course, a certain, even in professionals uh, like yourselves, there's a certain tension, yes, before a performance Indeed. of import. Um, uh, if there's anything that the staff can assist you with, uh, please don't uh, hesitate to ring the bell. Uh, it is now uh, only 30 minutes before we shall compete. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, also I will remind you that in addition to the unique object uh, that is the Goethe Flöte, uh, this, you will, again, you have all won simply by being here and the uh, personages for whom you should perform uh, after the competition at my little soiree are significant individuals, and uh, and my hand as well, if I may say so, without being without humility. I have the ear of the conductors and composers of our day. So I am uh, most grateful that you've allowed us to incredibly uh, to play for you. That honor alone is enough. Oh, very good. Uh, so I uh, shall prepare myself. Uh, Miss Dewhurst will come uh, to fetch you when it is time to compete. You will choose yourselves. Each of you place this page individually as you as you hear it, as you recognize, as it comes to you, right? The tempo mm -hmm. and the pitch and so on. You will play in a sequence, which you must decide for yourselves. One, two, three, four, and five, yes? So the play person who plays first has the advantage, perhaps, that it will be uh, fresh yeah, to my ear. The person who plays last has perhaps the advantage of having heard the other interpretations. But I trust, I assure you that I, my ear is very discerning uh, and that I have studied this piece for some time. And if I were still playing, I would have an interpretation very much my own. Mm. I would be looking to hear a, a, a truthful reflection of this, is this music as you hear it in your bones, yes? Yeah, very good. Yes. We. Oui. So again, the bell is here if you need anything. Um, if you need, if you wish, uh, you could step outside if you wish to rehearse privately or the library is also available. I should be upstairs. Um, Yes, and I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you in a, a, approximately one half hour. I'll feed to see. Cheers. Yes, I will go find a uh, a private place. I will ask Miss uh, Dewhurst also if she has a uh, a writing implement, something I can write with, a pen. Certainly, she'll provide you with a fountain pen and uh, and a rather handsome notepad. Mm -hmm. Allison um, will actually step outside. She'll take that offer. And I think Alex is going to follow Allison outside, not forebodingly or anything, but right. yeah. I'm uh, I'm going to head into the library just mm -hmm. so, so I can have somewhere to uh, and, private and somewhat insulated. And I am going to uh, position myself in front of the uh, original document and uh, tr practice off of that as I feel that I get more inspiration of the original intent. Very good. Uh, how will you decide in what order to perform? So we'll say, you know, we're not going to roll for inspiration. We'll say that you mm -hmm. you take this time. Uh, Allison, uh, the first, probably Venus, actually, is the first celestial body that shows up. Um, the, the, you know, the evening star is the first thing. And there'll be some faint speckles after that. And the uh, uh, I could make a roll if you'd like, but do do I find any portentous sort of indication from that for my interpretation? Um, uh, I know some of the characters have a, a bit of an occult background. Are you in that camp? Yes. Yeah. Uh, why don't you Why don't you make that roll? Badly failed. Huh. So you feel, you know, you you feel as though you might be onto something, but it's not catching yet. Maybe when it's darker, maybe 
you know, circumstances will avail. But for, for right now, you're you're going to have to go intellectual rather than celestial. Uh, Robert Woods, uh, the comparing the original in its glass case to the photostat you have. Yes. Uh, what you know, of course, what the the primary difference is is in coloration. Mm -hmm. You know, the the color original object versus the the black and white reproduction, and that gets you thinking. Uh, chromatically you wonder if this could be played in the chromatic scale rather than the standard you know western major mm -hmm. minor mm -hmm. thing um okay. because again those constructions those musical and you know indicators can come later than this was composed presumably okay yep mr demarco mr hellman any particular did you mr helman uh, you followed johansson out did you then make a sharp turn away so, so yep that little privacy yeah there's actually there's a, a pretty sheltered gazebo on the on the opposite side of the of the property from the library on the on the music room side okay um that that might have a little residence in it for for practice okay for hearing yourself yeah, I'll make my way there. Take a look around. Make sure that there's nobody I'm going to bother, and make sure there's nothing unusual. The uh, the garage where the rolls is presumably parked is is a ways from the house. Mm -hmm. um, you can you know the top of the manor has smaller windows that you assume are servants' quarters. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nobody about except for you as the guests. At this okay. point, I'll do some warm ups and uh, and practice uh, the piece. I am uh, going to give this uh, an interpretation somewhat Byzantine in nature, following an older scale, something I think might come from that particular period in time. Um, I'm doing my rehearsal in my head mostly. And I'm making little notations. Um, I think that music of this period, they allowed a lot of uh, improvisation, which I will add to it. And once I've sort of confirmed that in my head, I'm going to think up some more things I can do to undermine everybody else uh, by making them think about their makeup and their... Uh, their affairs that they've had in the past and <laughs> things like that. Um, so you're staying in the music room as well as uh, Mr. Woods? I went to find some place where I could be alone. Okay. Um, so down the hall, there's you know a little telephone closet where you sure. can, so if you're not going to make any noise, sure. Right. Um. As I said, I made my way to the library, um, mm -hmm. where it's, you know, I'm surrounded by books, so it's probably one of the more insulated rooms in, in the house. Less mm -hmm. chance of being heard. Um, so, of course, I've got my music out, and I'm sort of humming it, you know, to make sure I've, I've got the melody down as I imagine it. But based on where it was found and more than likely the history of the area, I was I'm planning on, on playing it in a more ethereal, almost majestic um style because I'm interpreting this as ascension to the court. You're saying to the court of God, you know, you're coming into his presence. So um it's going to be something sort of awe inspiring and very like almost transcendental. So I'm gonna try and bring that feeling to the piece. Maybe not unlike Mr. DeMarco, some some grace notes at a higher scale to sort of suggest, yeah, an elevation sort of thing. Uh, maybe like some of those, yes, but I'm definitely going to be emphasizing the just like the wonder and grandeur and like you're now in front of he who is and was and always will be. So of course you're going to you know want this to sound perfect. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, 
you got there around 4.30, you had your snacks, so the competition was set for 6.15, and a little after 6, uh, Miss Dewhurst starts collecting you, you know, those of you who went outside. Uh-huh. Like, you know. Um. Could I, since we were both outside, was I able to hear anything of Alex's performance from a distance? Absolutely, absolutely. Especially if you wanted to be remotely sneaky about it so that, you know, he didn't, wasn't self-conscious when you just poked your head around the house. Hmm. But he's, he's, you know, he's playing outdoors. It's... Right. Uh, um, did, yes. Much like Simon, I'm not actually, I, I, I'm not, I don't know if you say you played it at all. I didn't play it at all. I just mm-hmm. was planted out in my head. Mm-hmm. It's it, it, it's interesting. You definitely it you as you read the sheet music directly, you can put it together in your head, but it's very slippery. If you're not looking at it, the notes kind of just fade out of your head and you have to refresh yourself. Um, because because it's odd. It's not, I mean, it's very hard to categorize the musical line yeah. as, a, as a familiar melody. And it doesn't repeat on this page, which is, you know, substantial, like it's up two full minutes, depending on how, what tempo you're assuming. And yet Dude. it's all new. Due to those attributes, Allison's performance, and and especially due to the fact that Allison is interested in differentiating herself due to performances that she imagines that other people will be using, she makes it. She use, her plan is a bizarre, staccato, lifeless performance of it. Mm-hmm. And so we, uh, we're being gathered together. Yes, Miss Dewhurst is summoning you. Uh, once, once I'm where other people are, I'm like, so Mrs. Miss Dewhurst, um, does Mr. DeMarco like? I mean, I'm sorry, that's me. Does Mr. Adrea like cats? Uh, I could swear that I heard cats screeching out in the garden. I was outside, and I don't think I heard them. I don't know that Mr. Dreyer has ever mentioned a pet to me of any nature, mm. Mr. DeMarco. Um, so uh, the maestro will be uh, attending your performance in just a few minutes. Have you determined uh, in what order you are to perform? Is there a volunteer? I'll, I'll, I'll go last. I'll go first. I'll, I'll be in the middle. Second, then. And I shall go just before Simon. Well, uh, I appreciate that you um, came to this decision with so uh, little fanfare, or I, I obviously you're all uh, very good sports persons in that you didn't jockey for a position. Nine. Press the maestro to not base his interpretation of our performances based on the ordering. Yeah. Skilled enough to do that, at least. Of course, of course. Though, Mr. Woods, you must be quite confident to go first. I am. Thank you. All we then have to do is play better than you. Or, uh, as more likely, uh, attempt to play better. We shall see. We shall see. It's not a spot hidden role so much as an observation role, but as you are keyed up and waiting for the maestro to come into the music room and hear your efforts, you're looking around at the other antique instruments and the the sketches and portraits and uh, roll spot hiddens and see what how notice you feel. Uh, Regular noticing. Regular. Nothing. <laughs> I got a hard success. Uh, I I got a three under four. Wow. So it's extreme. 
so uh, the regular successes, what strikes you is the the breadth of the maestro's social network. Uh, you know, these portraits and sketches go back into the 19th century. Uh, there are uh, divas and conductors and famous violinists and other uh, solo instrumentalists from, well, you know, across Europe and, and America. Um, it's an impressive collection. You know, many of the sketches are personally signed. Some of them are by notable visual artists as well. Alex, uh, your hard success, uh, well, you notice that um, that uh, uh, there's a, a a photograph of young Arthur Rittenhouse, who was a an exciting uh, composer of of twentieth century opera in in America. Um, who uh, vanished mysteriously about eight years ago. And there are, you know, sort of always rumors about, did he flee to Mexico and, you know, uh -huh. get gunned down in a brothel or, you know, whatever became of him. Uh -huh. Some some oddity. Uh, whereas, Allison, you, you, you noticed that portrait as well. And then it sort of joggle something in your head and you look around. There's also a, a beautiful watercolor sketch of uh, the young soprano uh, Marie Roulier, who uh, is also unaccounted for. She was a promising young talent who went missing in Paris six or five years ago sometime. Uh, and there have been rumors about, you know, what happened to beautiful young Marie and, you know, why she was never found. And there's also, and you're not as sure of this one, but there's a there's a rather um, stark black and white photograph of Heinz, somebody, Heinz Ot Ottermann, Obermann, some German conductor who uh, was rumored to have died violently, but Again, it was never clear exactly what happened. There was no published story about exactly what occurred. But there's in all of the grandeur of the personages that have visited or been, you know, friends with Mr. Dreyer, there is this undercurrent of, you know, it's he has this memento mori almost of these people who are lost. It's very uh, unusual. It sends a shiver, a shiver down Allison's spine, but she would even she's not that she's hiding it from everyone else she would just think it embarrassing to mention the uh that her paranoia of thinking that this is important i would um i would point out uh, the picture of a uh, young arthur uh but more as a as an inquisition does anyone have familiarity with young arthur rittenhouse he disappeared mm -hmm. at some time very talented young man very strange to see a picture on Wee. the wall I've heard yeah. of I, I've heard of him, but uh, we've all most of us know his story. But it appears the Maestro knew it. I'm not surprised the Maestro knew him, but uh, the, the Maestro certain... knows hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. Some of them disappeared. Some of them die. Mm -hmm. If in fact, I'd say that if any any musician dies, he's probably known him in some fashion. So. For that matter, so. within the time span of some of these people, the Spanish influenza happened. So oh, that's true. You know, there are any number of people who have been lost. Um, it's, as it's such a conversation piece, Allison will point out the other figures. Is that right, Allison? To my knowledge, but let's not make too much of it. It's exactly what Simon said. It's it's that he's connected. He's well connected. That is a part of life, after all. Mm -hmm. It is. Mr. Hansen, are, are you... You have seemed this evening a bit nervous. Are you all right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm nervous. Actually, to be honest, I've heard the wildest rumors about you specifically. About me? About you, yeah. 
Um, they're probably not true, and it's probably ridiculous for me to even mention them. But I, I, I've heard you're a, a, a bloodthirsty. If you've gotten multiple duels or something like that. I I may be a bit. Uh, uh, how should we say it? Uh, uh, in a competition, I I don't usually pull my punches. Uh, uh, this evening, I've been trying very difficult, very very hard to uh, undermine you all. Of course, it's all fair play, uh, uh, and I don't think any of you stand much of a chance. But uh, mm. you know, might as well seal the deal. But blood, I've heard uh, it blood more thirst- liberally, though, <laughs> like that you are a gunslinger, sort of thing. A gunslinger. That's like that's you are. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. It's Mr. Hanson. Pretend I never I, said it. I, Mr. Hanson, I assure you, he is nothing of the sort. Are you certain you might might not have misplaced a certain uh, flash in your coat? What are you implying? Oh, I'm sure you understand. I say, buffing my nails. <laughs> mm. You mean like uh-huh. mine? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all have flasks in our shirts, don't we? Mm. Maybe the ru- maybe the rumors were all mixed up, and maybe I'm the gunslinger. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps more literally, I, I'm a, I am. What do you say, a vampire? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I am oh, a vampire. I'm a and, vampire in music. Uh, oh, and and believe me, I've not. This is not the first time I've heard rumors that I enjoy a. Uh, different sort of powder but the, uh, no we've, of course we've, not we've all heard rumors because yeah. there are people out there like us who say nasty things about us because they're jealous i've heard some very nasty things about mr hellman and his mm. uh, wild affairs with uh, a lot of important women mm. Nah, but, sordid lies, I assure you. But then, but, but then again, Mr. DeMarco, with his face, could you blame them? I haven't heard much, though, about Mr. Woods. Uh, no, to that I can speak, although I can't attest to the truth of his addiction to certain substances, but... Oh, Mr. Woods, were you potentially projecting your little problem on me? Ah, uh, no, no, I uh, was not. I assure you that uh, um, the only chemical I enjoy is a spot of uh, alcohol now and then. Let's Besides, walk away stronger friends from this, and let's not let the competition get in the way of that. I, whoever wins, it's due to the ear of the maestro, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily more talented. It means that this performance went over better with him. Let's Let's, let's stay in touch if we can. Yes, let's all be friends, and we shall live to ripe old ages and laugh with one another until the end of days. Sounds marvelous. Miss Dewhurst looks palpably relieved after having been scandalized by some of the earlier conversation. (laughs) She was afraid that somebody was going to take up a a letter opener and stab someone else. Um, uh, And uh, she... uh, she uh, rings uh, for uh, the staff, and um, soon uh, chairs are brought in to the music room, so that those of you who are not playing uh, can be comfortable. And after the that matter is resolved uh, under Stephen's direction, then in comes the maestro himself, mm. and he's pretty keyed up. Stand you know, up he. For him. He looks he looks uh ready to receive, you know, what the best you you people have. And he says, My friends, I hope you have found the time useful. I am uh, eager to hear the music that comes through this page to you. I'm eager to find uh the right owner for G. Gordonflute. Uh, and I understand from Ms. Duhas that you have chosen a sequence of Indeed. play. Yeah. And and you are, you are first, Herr Woods, if this is correct? Uh, indeed. Very good. So if the rest of you will be seated, uh, Stevens, Ms. Duhas also. 
Uh, we won't stand on ceremony. It's a short piece. We will see how you deliver to us, yes? Yeah. We. Oui. And so if you'll, um, do you have any further thoughts about your approach? Uh, I was going to go with uh, what, uh, the chromatic uh, scale approach to it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you feel uh, you 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 feel confident in your choice of having reflected on the original, mm -hmm. uh, and so you should. Uh, I invite you to take a bonus die for your music roll. Okay. Oh, thank God! I had a bonus die. Uh, <laughs> hard. <laughs> hard success. Very good. Um, everyone. He did very well. You know, it sounded it sounded irritating, but but also beautiful and maybe a little bit right, but I don't think any of you feel shaken in the interpretation that you have chosen. And the maestro, you know, he, he claps lightly, warmly. It's like, you know, he will uh, continue okay. as a piece, yes? Yep. Um, I'm heat, up next. Yeah. yeah. Any any further thoughts about your? Um, I definitely want to, keep, as I said, keep in mind like what I think is happening in the piece. Again, based off the off the title where it was found and everything. So I'm definitely going to be playing it in a way where it's like I'm sort of imagining I'm an angel piping souls into the court of God. Right. So you've got you're doing a kind of uh, very very English y well no, French French love their cemeteries too. Yeah, you're doing mm -hmm. very yeah. All right. Uh so again, roll music. Have a take a bonus. Okay. Okay, and then ha! eight out of seventy-five. So All that right. would so that's an extreme. Mm -hmm. Very good. And again, everyone. You heard something different, you know, the, the pitch was different, the, the pace was different, but it was the piece. If you, you're, you know, and the room is resonating with it a little bit, and the maestro, again, gently claps. Next, please. I go to sit. Allison feels even more fortified in her approach now that Ruby gave such a sort of perfectly performed traditional approach. That the bizarre staccatoized version. Mm -hmm. Super modern. Yes, take a bonus as well. Um, that is going to be thirteen under seventy-five. So that's still yeah. an extreme, but not as extreme. <laughs> Great. Very good, uh, and and uh, you know that there's a there's a a palpable chill, a modernist chill in this room from that stark, uh, edgy, uncomfortable, angular interpretation. But it definitely brought something to that simple melody that that the other performers had not yet generated. The maestro claps gently, uh, and I believe uh, Mr. Hellman is next. Yeah, danke schön. And uh, Alex is going to take uh, take his position, prepare his flute, and he uh, is going to look at this from more of a perspective of music, uh, ascension to the throne, ascension to the court. Um, you know, it really depends on who's writing the story of history, whether or not that's a good thing, right? So Alex is going to take a little bit darker approach. He's going to pick like C sharp signature. So maybe just as many sharps uh, that he can possibly squeeze in here, try and make it just as minor as possible and put it into a real slow lilting kind of minor march uh, tempo. Um, and that's the way that he's going to approach it. Excellent. So yes, roll and, and with your bonus. All right. Not great. A 19, which is just a hard. 
Him? I think. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yes. If it's a 75, a, a 19 is a hard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. A 15 would be extreme. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, and right. The, it, and it's it's just about full dark outside now. So the uh, the tall, thin music room windows are, you know, just a deep green and it's suitable to the sorrowful approach that Mr. Hellman took. Uh, and you've all absorbed a little more uh, and, and the maestro claps gently. And finally, Mr. Duvalka, I believe. So my performance, as I said, a Byzantine sort of sound to it. I wanted to create um I wanted to create an air of solemnity and uh, still keep a sort of regular rhythm to the whole piece, but to start out slowly as start out quietly and build in uh, in sort of grandeur to the piece as it goes forward uh and you also have a bonus die. Okay, my version. first roll was 06. My uh, second uh, one's uh. 87. So. Yeah, there's... <laughs> hard, hard, hard to beat you a beat six. me by a nose. <sighs> and, uh, and so the... Um, by a flute, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the increasingly vibrant and slightly slightly also chromatic orientalist approach that uh, Mr. DeMarco takes, plays the final note on the page and there's a a hush in the room and the maestro slowly stands and claps and he turns and bows to each of you in turn. his his man's man is also gently clapping, and and Miss Dewhurst is clapping, but she doesn't seem to really. She's just doing it because it's time. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the maestro bows to each of you in turn and says, uh, "My friends, uh, you have honored me. You have you have truly brought this uh, this tune, this melody, to life in this room tonight." Uh, my uh, my guests in a, a little more than an hour will hear you all together in this uh, ensemble that you have created tonight in, with your unique contributions. Um, these are this is the beginning of your acquaintance with uh, substantial, powerful people who uh, appreciate the gift that uh, music and art and science and philosophy can bring. Uh, Each of you performed excellently. All of you captured some of the nature of the piece. And as the piece unfolds in its entirety, with the 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 Goethe flute. I think you will all hear something that you have never heard before. Danke, Hedger. But we have a competition. Yes, so we must have a winner. It's a very close called thing. Uh, and all of you, I think, can stand to learn from each other some of the subtleties, some of the tonalities of the whole. But, Mr. DeMarco, the price is yours. Uh, and again, all of you, we are all in right now, yes, a musical family. So the nature of competition is that we have winners and losers. It is painful sometimes, but uh, none of you will leave here without gaining, yes? So. Uh, it is all right, Maestro. Um... I gave it everything I had, but uh, sometimes it's not quite enough. But that's just the nature of the beast. You know, it perhaps does not hurt. Also, uh, we are forming again some 
family, some ensemble, yes. Uh, I'm sure that Mr. DeMarco's interpretation came from within, but also he had the chance to hear all of you beforehand. So it is a cumulative, yes. At any rate, uh, Ms. Dewhurst will see to uh, introducing you to the rest of the materials. I uh, will change and I have to greet people. Um, again, if you need anything, the servant, you ring the bells, yes? Um, yes, of course. One more thing before you leave. Um, would you like us to learn from DeMarco his interpretation of it so that we can perform it at the ensemble matching that? I think having heard it, if you wish, if you wish to ask him some specific question, yeah, he will. I'm sure he will share. But uh, you will be, you will all, the four of you, yes, will play this page again. It is this is the repeating form, and then there is a longer melody that had Marco will be playing on on the ivory flute. Uh, so. He will be expanding the piece. There are three movements. It is broken into three movements, roughly. But you will each accompany him. You will be following him. You can bring also your interpretations to to this. It's a chorus of sorts. Yes. Mm. Um, you do, you need a not chaotic. No. It is. Uh, it is not a simple piece, and it is not also it is not mathematical in the ways of say a Bach or something. It is uh, it is more organic, yeah. And you will listen as you play. So it, you know you will if you if you find that the that a chaos is is what you should what what is this song for you then then it is chaos. If you find that it is. That you are fitting, that you're weaving together, that would be, yeah. I think you have all proven yourselves to be magnificent. So I'm, I'm sure that you will uh, honor the piece. Uh, so, if I'm to understand, will I be playing the gutta flute? Yes. Uh, well, may I practice? It's yes. Uh, Miss Duhurst is, is opening the case right now with the little silver key. Yeah, <laughs> it's you will find it's a it's. It, I know that it is uh, not the format to which you are accustomed. You will find it is an extremely natural instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, it it lends itself to the the mind and the hand. If you find no, no. it, if it if it troubles you, then you know we will make no. arrangements. But the piece is it's it's the right instrument for the piece. I think you'll find. And and you'll be giving us uh, photostatic copies of the full piece to practice as well. Yes, yes, excellent. Um, and so he uh, he sort of bows, half bows to you all, and and scuttles out. And indeed, uh, Miss Dewhurst has unlocked the case with the the uh, Goethe flotte inside, and it is light and subtly carved strange and it 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 doesn't make your fingers tingle or anything but mechanically uh you get a 25 percent boost to your music skill it's it's a it's a powerful instrument i also need each of you now that you've heard the piece Beginning five times. I need you all to to roll an a dia roll for me. Okay. Ugh, fail. I failed. Uh, hard. Ninety nine. Failed. <laughs> well, Seventy five. Well, if you're going to botch, that's not a bad time to botch. <laughs> well, and in fact, uh, those of you who failed are hunky dory. You who succeeded, Ms. Rafik, you lose five intelligence points. Uh, that repetition oof. of that strange melody has sort of done a little job. Earworm, dear. It's yeah, and in fact, all of you are uh, are earworming a bit. So like yes. I'm, so like I'm, so there we're, we're, we're all so we're all distracted, but I'm distracted enough that it's sort of taking over my thoughts a little bit. 
Yeah, and it like in in it's it feels a little bit like you have a like a a mental like blinder right here. Like you can see around this, but there's something. There is like yeah, you're just like you're feeling a little occluded mentally. I am going to take some air. Um, I'll be back in a moment. I say as I take a quick, quick turn around the garden, trying to clip this fog out of my head. Very good. It's, it's, there's also there's still coffee and tea in the other room, and if you mm-hmm. want to ask the servants for something else, I, I think you can count on whatever you need. My apologies to anyone if my uh, intimidation threw you off. I oh. did. I did tactically choose the last position so that I could do my best to surpass any of you, but... Uh, I I don't think the positioning mattered at all. Honestly, I think your interpretation was correct, ultimately. I, I applaud your ability to well, thank uh, you. know it when you see it. It's uh, it's quite light. Um, I think you might have been correct about bone. Um, hmm. uh, I, I look it over, and uh, I, I see if I can get the fingering correctly. It's quite different than a flute. Uh, more like a recorder. Yeah, it is. It is like a recorder, but of course, you 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 know, the recorder is a precursor instrument. You're familiar. It's just sure. Um, so if you I know, can that, identify, you know, which note is which. <laughs> you, yeah, you you can you can you can you can test that out and get a sense of the scale and play a but and and in fact, when you play a scale, it isn't a normal. You know, it's not right. Oh. It's a, it's an odd maybe pentatonic sort of feeling. Yeah, like, uh, the scale uh, is quite a bit different. Uh, uh, uh. It's yeah, it's not it's it is not the sequence of notes that that Western civilization has mm. gravitated toward powerfully. But it's some of the things where you kind of had to 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 play a a sort of chord on your flute uh-huh. to get that greek that eastern kind of mm-hmm. feel come naturally from from this mm. it's um, quite, quite interesting the tone and yes. and uh, uh in addition to a, a photostat of the entire piece uh miss Dewars also unlocks the case i mean i don't you don't want to rub the your face on the vellum or anything but the entire <laughs> The the manuscript is actually a it's a gatefold sort of thing, right? It's it's on one long piece of vellum that's folded back and forth, and you can all you can put that on the uh, the the music room table, and have a look at it. It's the only thing. It it, it continues to look like a somewhat chaotic piece from a contemporary sheet music sure. sense. But there are distinct breaks that it, it, the, the, the musical line ends on one page and then begins on the next. So you can see that there are three movements, for lack of a better word. There are three parts to it. Let's, um, let's look at this together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, um, if you would like, you know, to uh, have a go at it with the, uh, the Gotha flute, uh, I mean, I would. Uh, it's all of our success. We're going to play together. If you'd like to see what it feels like, what it plays like, uh, you notice the tone, the 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 scale is is not a Western scale. It's quite mm. unusual. Yes, it sounds oh. almost microtonal. Uh, is multi uh, seventy two note scale, perhaps? Perhaps yes. I say after I come back from the uh, from the garden. <sighs> Mademoiselle Rafik, uh, as you were returning to the house, uh, you saw a, another ex- very expensive vehicle pull in, pull up the drive. So the okay. guests have begun arriving. Um, it's now that it's now it's properly dark out, but it isn't night. So there's that like even blue light. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, the headlights on the cars are on, but you can still see, you know, around outside without trouble. Ah, um, as I should come back to the house, I believe the guests are beginning to arrive. Hmm. I haven't seen the stars out the window now. Yeah, try it again. I'll fail again. (laughs) 
Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe it's ge geographic. Um, what, what, what were you thinking of astrology in particular when you were looking at them, or were you? Yes, I, I well, I, I'm, I'm examining them from the entire survey of occult knowledge that right. I might possess. Uh, you're having you you're you're peering up at the darkening sky and you know orientating yourself based on you know the card you know the long winding road you're not exactly sure where north is or anything but the evening star suggests okay roughly that's that the hills are kind of high and you're thinking on these things and and then you you think that uh you're you're reminded of the fact that 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 um the books open on the reading table in the library were notably esoteric that coming to my mind i will return to the library idly and um look through the books can i uh ask then for a spot hidden roll mm -hmm. while you peruse them uh from oh. from johansson Ooh, uh, my spot hidden is that is that is an extreme. Okay. Um, so, uh, what strikes you the 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 uh, one of the books on the table, the monograph on the nature of higher powers. It was, again, it was authored by somebody whose name was just D. And when you noticed that earlier, it didn't signify anything to you. But then, picking it up and looking, uh, it's um, the publish. The publishing house on this little this slender volume is called the Sultan's Court, and you are aware from the more esoteric reading rooms in the city and whatnot that the Sultan's Court is a very specialized press that produces small editions of esoterica from a sort of decadent post-theosophical position with you know, pretty oddball stuff, hard to come by. And when you when you sort of catch on to that, looking at this particular volume, you realize that on a low shelf of one of the built-in library shelves, he's got a substantial library of the pamphlets and, and you know, small bound volumes from this press. So your host Until... is, 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 you know, is into the weird until I'm called for by one of my associates, I will scan through these books and flip them open. Yeah, they're they're the kind of esoterica that doesn't immediately open itself up to one, even with a little bit of background. Their statements like understanding the music of reality could allow an accomplished practitioner to alter or subvert reality itself, which could mean a lot or a little. Um, but they have, they do have, they have a feeling of, of interesting knowledge about them. Like there's a, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're buzzy. And you can, you know, you're probably flipping through uh, one that's got a title that has to do with Egypt or something when um, there's a rap on the library door and Miss Dewhurst pokes her head in and says, um, if you'll join the others, we're, we're dressing for the performance. Ah, I apologize. And in fact, um, the 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 uh, young dark-eyed maid or whatever uh, her precise title is has has entered the music room where you guys have been looking over the piece with uh, Miss Dewhurst and a, a a set of robes for you. Um, they're sort of like um, like graduation gowns. You know, heavy dark fabric, loose sleeves. There's like a, a choir would wear. Yeah. Like a choir, yeah, like a church group might wear, or um, like like we do at Christmas time when we're yeah. doing a concert sometimes. Or maybe uh, since uh, didn't you imply uh, Simone that uh, some that the it was almost a Gregorian chant, maybe uh, to capture the feeling of. Mm. 
And for all we know, he's going to have us do a Christmas concert or something. Yeah. Uh, well, this, June, uh, piece but, is far too well, dire, no, I think. It's far away, away, but... Uh, well, flute or flute. I, I would like very much your assistance. There were things that each of you performed in your in your things, especially like Mr. Uh, Hellman, the uh, timbre and the color that you placed on some of the notes was very interesting. Oh, um, sure. And I think that I, I fell flat on those. Uh, but uh, as we should practice together, because this flute is quite different, has quite a different timbre than a normal flute. Well, if the office still stands, I would be very happy to try it. So I think it's important that we add some some nuance. Uh, any child can play the notes, as you all know, the necessary to put body and soul into the note itself. I thought you all did extremely well. But I don't know how you did that thing with that one note that you did. Was that uh, on purpose or an accident? It was lovely. I will attempt to recreate. It was the one time that I thought that I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you like to try it? The, the, I mean, uh, danke schön. we all should get very familiar with this flute. Yeah, I would love I'll to. Allison refuses the offer. She's just become in anxious just to, due to uh, various reasons. I, re I request no. from Miss Dewhurst uh, a scotch. If she could be. Uh, yeah, I, to be perfectly frank, Mr. Woods, I'm not sure I can guarantee a scotch, but I can certainly find you a whiskey. Ah, uh, as long as else? it's not sweet. Um, in fact, I would. I think I, would, I might like some tea. In fact, might I accompany you? I uh, I, I feel like I need to just get, stretch my legs a little bit before we uh, perform. All right. But quickly, because we do need to practice a bit. Of course, of course. Strange. And I'll go over the, the piece. Oh, it is complicated. Look here. Hmm. What, do you, what do you all make of this passage here? Very strange. Shocking. Um, Maybe it it's a... Really uh... sense to me. Yeah, maybe it's easier to interpret with the uh, different uh, configuration of the bone flute. Uh, so, um, Mademoiselle Rafik, uh, you know, uh, you, Ms. Dewhurst will step out and um, so there's somebody scurrying around and she says, you know, tell Stevens that uh, there's a, three whiskeys for the music room. And then she takes you back across the library and uh, finds the tea is tepid and then rings the bell to have somebody come to the kitchen to, for a fresh pot. Ah, merci beaucoup. I most certainly needed this. You notice that, you know, a couple of heavy wooden doors away from where uh, Helman and DeMarco are practicing, you're still... You really hearing the the echo, the earworm of that melody is persisting in a way that is uncomfortable. And in fact, you might even like turn suddenly as if you heard a few notes, and Miss mm -hmm. Dewhurst will look at you, you know, curiously because she didn't hear anything. Right. So we're on, we're on the border. We're between the earworm and auditory hallucination. Right now. It... <sighs> what a... I, I sort of sip my tea and think, you know, what an awful time to get a headache. <laughs> Competition is stressful. Long drives. Uh, yeah. Which is partly why I'm trying to limit my exposure to the this melody until I absolutely can't avoid it. <laughs> Oh, and uh, Stevens uh, pokes his head in and says, um, mm, uh, Mr. Feek, the, the girl will be here with fresh tea in a moment. Ms. Dewhurst, we need you upstairs. 
and she she scuttles out and leaves you alone in the library. Okay. Um, um as I'm waiting for the tea, I do kind of um take a look, you know, just sort of look at a couple of those books that were sitting out, and you know, n nothing we didn't already know, but affecting the reality. Hmm. Yeah, the uh, the other the other book that was left out, um, sorry, uh, has musical notation in it and also mathematical equations and very dense, uh, you know, black letterpress text about the physical world being a manifestation of mathematics. It's very heady stuff. It's not going to help your headache at all. Um, but it does. No, of course not. It does suggest that the maestro's interests are broad ranging, mm -hmm. to say the least. Oh yeah, certainly. Uh, Mr. Heldman, um, you also find the Goethe Flöte to be interestingly natural mm -hmm. to play. Like it, okay. it isn't. Even though you're not familiar with the spacing, you can't. The muscle memory of many years of practice isn't helping, but it feels easy to sure intuitive sound from yeah sure. Uh, and you can and again you can get some of the coloration that you were sort of trying to force with your own very nice you know German main manufactured flute. Some of that coloration comes quite easily through this, and it's not ivory. Ivory has got that sort of buttery mm -hmm. weight to it. Mm -hmm. This is light and porous, and a drier, yeah. definitely bone. And even though it's been inscribed and I don't know, inked, you know, or whatever, it's been treated. Mm -hmm. uh, you're sure it isn't ancient. You know, it's okay. it's it's an odd, you know, which is not to say that the maestro is wrong that it isn't priceless. It's obviously rare and unusual. Probably less than two hundred years, maybe yeah, less I than a hundred. I think you could. I think you would guess that it. What it's not ancient, so who knows? It's it's, and it's curious that he's wrong about the providence of it because he, you know, you're sure that this the vellum that's set out is. You know, yeah. rich with age, five or six hundred years old, easily. Uh, it, it doesn't look machined, though. So, uh, no handwork for ex certain. Exquisitely made. Nine, a very nice tool. Um, well, let's let's go through the piece then a couple times. Yeah. Yes. It's uh. It's it gets more compelling. Okay. You know, you, you, the, as you as you as you repeat it, it doesn't make sense. It's still jarring, but it does compel you as a performer. It does it, and it, and and as as performing as a group instead of in, as individuals, there's definitely you're hearing. Yeah, yeah. You see here, it's it's purposefully breaking the natural rhythm uh it 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 wants it wants to stay rhythmical but then it purposefully shatters that that rhythm very strange very I, unusual uh, i think this is where we find the allison johansson's staccato approach much more applicable yes yes exactly Hmm. Allison was in her own thoughts. Just because what? Oh, um, very good. I'm yeah. glad to contribute. Yes. And what happened to uh, Miss Rafik? She. I'm. I'm here. I'm here. I say, coming in with, with a cup of tea. I was uh, waiting for some tea, and I was getting a bit of a headache. Mm. It's been a Please. long day with the travel and all. I've. Uh, it's like I found a bit of a fog in my brain. Well, um, 
I was hoping to ask you about this part of the, the music here. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, I was just pointing out that it breaks the rhythm um, here, and uh, I'll, I'll take the, uh, the flute and, and play that part of it. There's not really any bars, so I'll start from here and go to here. You hear how there's that, the rhythm as it goes, and then suddenly yes. it's like, nope, can't keep that rhythm. It goes off. And I'll, well, I'll yes, I, I do sort of see what you mean. In fact, uh, as I'm kind of looking at that section of the music, um, it almost seems to me that uh, this would almost require a complete shift in tone. Perhaps if we started with your uh, your Byzantine approach, but then all of a sudden the mel the rhythm breaks here, and we almost need to shift uh, approaches. That could be it. Let's try. Let's try that. It suddenly sounds much more somber when you when you split it there, but I kind of like it. <laughs> And you're working on this, and it's mm -hmm. you know I it, it's coming together. You don't feel like a well rehearsed symphony orchestra right. that knows the piece. You feel like you're. But you think you can musicians. follow along? Yes. Yeah. Right. You're, but you're definitely figuring it out. And some of the and some of the disparate parts are are coming together. And the and the introduction of the Goethe Flöte. It 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 sort of by its nature tells you nothing about the tempo, but a lot about the the pitches and and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we're hearing this being played on the gutta futa, um, what's the kind of feeling? I guess like, what's the impression of like the the t resonance of the flute that we're getting? Like, the sound, the, the quality of the sound, I guess is what the, I'm trying to ask. Yeah, the timbre. The, it, timbre. It's, it's, it's a pipe. It's not a, it's, it's not a deep instrument. It's a, it's, it, it pipes out. It isn't okay. jarringly high. It's not shrill. But so, it, all right. But so, it, so, mm -hmm. Again, the, the scale isn't the scale. Like it's not it's not designed to play. Okay, so somewhere between a recorder and a penny whistle, kind of. Well, there's there were recorders that are quite put low. a bird to shame. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. and also oh, yeah. there yeah there are four footers that are bassoony. So it's you know that that range is huge. It's the it's a light instrument, and the mm -hmm. tone is, I guess we're going to say not shrill, but piercing and it's a, it's ah. high and the and the the you know if he's playing like if, if he's playing exactly one open hole then it's it's a com it's a completely round note it's one tone but they're not spaced on the scale the way they should be it's like an out of tune piano right. except it's mm -hmm. a high pitch ah all right like, almost ding, rings dong, like dong. a bell on these high notes Mm. Uh, and also fingers. you uh the 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 sort of robes that you were given the, the dark gowns they fit really well mm. like somebody like had you you in mind when these were these are not all you didn't get five of the same thing you got fitted robes and they've got intricate stitching Hmm. Like in like you know like just the way that the 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 band around the sh the shoulders meets, there's uh -huh. there's even like a silver thread in the black cloth that sets out these like rather rather handsome looking and and they also because you weren't dressed for a formal performance and you know that there's about to be, I mean a glance out the window says that the people inside are very wealthy. Yeah. Trust the German when I tell you that these are very well manufactured. Hmm. How long oh. ago were we like invited here? Like weeks or two weeks uh, ago? Just trying to figure out like uh, if they had our measurements, you know, like. Uh, it depends. I, I don't. Uh, not all of you are based in New York, although all of you probably perform there. 
Um, you were all given ample opportunity to get here. It was a set date. So some of you okay. might have gotten a letter six weeks ago, some okay. of you might have gotten a telegram 10 days ago, depending yeah. on where you were coming from. But, but it was all conceivable that they could have had a robe made to fit my measurements, not like, oh, hey, they you could were have, invited yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we're performing like in orchestras, yeah. then they could probably contact somebody to get our measurements. Yeah, like concert. those would be on file with most yeah. with most concert halls we perform in because their mm -hmm. wardrobe people would need to know. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so it's 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 it is indicative of the fact that you were told you were coming to a competition and not a performance. Uh -huh. But he prepared these for you. That he is prepared and also controlling or yeah. In fact, uh, well. Let's take a five minute break as uh, Ms. Dewhurst is about to summon you for that performance. Okay. All right. Cool. And so you have prepared as much as the time has allowed you. You've gotten used to the robes that you were given. Uh, the tea has been drunk and the Actually, it turns out to be a pretty decent bourbon that they brought out of the cellar, although not a scotch, but not too sugary. Um, and Ms. Dewhurst uh, raps twice, opens the door and says, uh, they are prepared uh, for the recital in the conservatory, if you'd follow me. And you've been on both sides of the great hall and small doors off of it. And now you're going down to the end of the building opposite the front entrance and the conservatory is a hemicircular room with tall windows and there are a number of potted plants on the inside and you can see dimly without that there's a formal garden mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of french doors uh connecting them and there are a couple of rows of comfortable look padded straight back chairs set up around a, a small circular stage that's obviously be temper you know removable um and uh the maestro greets you at the door with a bit of a, a nod to bow and and waves you in um and stevens is uh in there helping some of the guests the guests are very expensively dressed. About a dozen people, eight or nine men, two or three women, um, evening dress. Uh, there's There are a couple of tables on the inner wall opposite the, with the windows with refreshments of various kinds. I um, guess we'll... Uh, I'll ask for... Uh, knowledge rolls and i'm looking for a hard or better i got a I hard got, i got a 15 yep i think nope. that's a hard very good so you can tell these people are rich because of their clothing etc but you also um recognize uh one of the gentlemen a fellow named stephen morehouse uh pretty much monopolizes coal in the eastern half of the United States. He's robber baron rich. Oof. Um, and also, uh, two of the guests, uh, Samantha Forrester and Anton von Sternhaum, are notable musical celebrities who are not in the public eye very much anymore. And also notably, they're missing their right forearms and hands. Uh, Anton has, you know, his sleeve folded up in a manner similar to the maestro's. Uh, Miss Forrester is, you know, wearing a pretty straight shift with a string of pearls and a belt and and she's got a, a glove to her elbow on her left hand and, and her right arm just ends at the elbow 
I uh, look um, at Allison as we're standing there, and uh, I kind of whisper over to her uh, prior to because of our conversation earlier. I will see your two missing musicians and raise you three people with the same missing arm. Um, Allison was already anxious and seeing this uh, dri- drives her a bit farther to the edge. Um, can can I see, do I recognize the same people as well? Uh, once pointed out, this is an era in which you don't always recognize celebrities because the you know the photo gravure process in the New York Times is still expensive and somewhat infrequent. But pointed out or with a name mentioned, you could you 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 will certainly acknowledge, oh yeah, that's she played that concert in Paris some years ago and hasn't been heard from much. You know, uh, uh, Samantha was a was a uh, a soprano who who performed extensively and uh Anton played you think a string it's been a while they they haven't been in the scene but of course the maestro hasn't been in the scene either he's been quite a recluse for some years he just remains a powerhouse you know for those in the know um when the five of you are ushered in also the they, you know, they were they were standing around and chatting. Some of them have, you know, glasses or whatever. They all applaud you when you come in the room. Um, and uh, and having bowed you in, the maestro also um, says, uh, you know, he asks if you have any questions about the preparations, if you understand the piece as well. I, I understand it's short notice, but we also understand that you all uh, have a feeling for this already. Huh. So, yeah, well, I think uh, I think I think we're ready. Uh, we're excited, excited to uh, to uh, let you hear our interpretation of it. Yes, we are excited also. This, I, my friends, might well be the beginning for you all for a, a new uh, life. We can only hope, Herr Dreyer. Highest echelons, yeah. We yes. hope we can do justice to the peace. And so uh, this uh, spot uh, for you, Mr. Tobacco as the soloist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if the others you can hear and, and there. Um, I the uh is a culmination of this exercise is that we have here a, an annual recital. This uh select group of individuals, these guests, we are, uh, we call ourselves, we are known as the Sultan's Courtiers, mm. a very elect group, if we may say so ourselves. And you are uh, most elect in being chosen to uh, play for us. Uh, those of you who are not soloing, we will follow and compliment Mr. DeBarco in his interpretation. Uh, And uh, just a few moments, we, uh, the the guests will also uh, don uh, their robes and we will fix the lighting and and begin. Thank you. Very good. Awesome. And that Stevens, the butler, and there's there's another um, young woman on the staff and they help the assembled guests dress in dark robes as well. Their robes are a little more elaborate than yours. They have stitched insignia here and there. There's a there's a there's a very intentional look to the goings mm-hmm. on. Um 
all anyone is welcome to roll uh, for a cult. I know I don't I don't right. know anybody other than Oof. Joe Hansen has much. I mean, yeah. I can try, but I doubt I'm gonna get anything. But yeah. I've got decent, but like nope. not with the seventy roll. <laughs> nope. So they're already anxious, Allison Johansson, having seen, having looked in the library mm. and looking at these robes and looking at what she was given to wear. You know, there's this is the sort of situation that usually there's an initiation before. <laughs> Like you have a strong sensation that this is culty. Do I get the feeling that they have like a grim sort of demeanor? Like the audience is like, is are they like, oh, this is this is absolutely a calm and celebrate celebrative occasion, or this is a normal sort of concert hush, or is there sort of like a sinister vibe that I'm getting? It is. It is neither grim nor casual. It is. It is keyed up. Like there's like anticipation. a there's a tension that's either fear or pleasurable anticipation, but they're like people's eyes are bright and their cheeks are flushed. They're but we're not hearing giggling or uh, conversations no. with people. Talking. I mean, they were chatting when you came in. They were all chatting with each other, but they're all part of a you know a. A group they're, they're they're familiar with each other they their applause when you came in was welcoming and a little bit celebratory and their manner as they are being dressed for your performance um it's it's th their expectations are elevated their their manner is they're 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 keyed up mm -hmm. um uh, regardless of any rumors that might have been said about Ms. Rafiq, uh, these people aren't coked up, but they, they're, they're, they're like, you know, they're, 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 they're excited. Um, they're vibrant. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's give them a show. All right. All right, then. All right. So we're going to play three acts. So, and for each one, you will be rolling your music skill all of you are high i think now simon is at a hundred percent given that he started at 75 and has the right. uh, so your intent is what is the outcome based you know based on your role the um the staff has sort of uh lined up behind and the the robed personages are seated Okay. Alex smooths his tie and makes sure everything is neat, adjusts his spectacles. Fancy mm -hmm. spectacles. Uh I make sure my lips are wet and that uh, you know, I've done a bit a few lip buzzes before we, you know, went in there to make sure that mm -hmm. I'm limber. Tip of the teeth, the lips and the tongue. There are some there are some heavy tapered candles on the sides of the room. I mean, there's electrical lighting as well, but the staff is lighting these heavy tapers. Um, and yeah, the crowd. It's only again, it's a it's a dozen guests and the maestro. The maestro is, remains standing while the guests all sit. Allison is nervously throwing her gaze around, expecting to be like captured, or she's looking for exits. Various, <laughs> just nervous and anxious uh behaviors and i'm thinking about putting on the most dramatic show possible so yeah i'll go quiet i'll close my eyes i'll count to 10 and then begin the piece very good all right here we go uh simon begins uh and we'll do uh I'll I'll ask for roles in the order that I'm seeing people. So it'll be uh, Demarco first. Oh, you can't fail. Well, yeah, but I can fail. I can get it Are just you... a regular. I got an O six. My first so extreme. <laughs> Mamzelle Rafik, how are you following? Um, that is a one point away from a hard. Very good. Sh sh I mean, should I, should I just blow the lock and make it a hard? 
Yes. It's one point. Make it a hard. Yeah. If that, if that one point matters, then I'll owe you an apology. <laughs> As you die. As you die. I mean, I have I have seventy six luck anyway, so yeah, one point is going to okay. kill me. You're doing okay. Allison, how do you do? A uh, fail. Actually, a okay. uh, very bad. It's a fumble. A fumble. Um, With ninety oh, no. what? Uh, is isn't the top isn't the top five score? It's ninety seven. 97. Yeah, it 96. People, it's a house rules thing, but 97 is definitely a terrible role. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. return to you. Uh, Mr. Woods? Zero one. Oh my god. In the groove. So uh, oh my off. god, don't make me laugh! <laughs> All right. Ow! Don't know. Uh, zero, cool. zero, four. So, wow, I cannot believe that we all rolled so well on that first round. <laughs> well, not all. That's true. That's true. That's true. So, uh, the the first uh, as you all begin on the first page, you will begin in rough concert. None of your instruments match the the bones. Yeah. So there's this interesting split in tone. And again, you're all interpreting. As the roughly the second line of the of sheet music as presented to you approaches, Alison Johansson drops her flute on the floor and uh well keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> Alison, you uh you're hearing it and you're playing along and then there's it's like a blinding flash obliterates your sense of the room you're in or what you're hearing and instead you don't feel you can't even feel your body and you have a sense of limitless void and then the, and then as if you turned away from a vast vacuum, a sort of blinding star, of, but it's a fleshy, wriggling star, and it seems to be distant and then almost upon you in a way that is terrifying and... Uh, I guess I'll take a power roll to see if you stay standing or if you fall. Uh, that's an 11, and I assume that's... All right. So you, you know, that happens, and you drop your instrument, and then you just sort of freeze on stage, and you can decide how to continue after a moment of... I feel like Allison is torn between her reputation and and utter horror. So and that's going to be I, affected by a sanity roll. Because you were physically as far as you could tell elsewhere. Um that's a 21. Okay. So, so. successful is a 1d3 please. Okay. So you feel jarred. Oh. <laughs> That's three. Okay. So you were, you were, yeah, you were quite jarred and you were saying about your, yeah, you're stuck between, I mean, I'm your reputation is very much on the line. These people are very powerful. So she ch chooses a middle way or not so much chooses, but just simply activates the middle way of she contributes less than she's in, supposed to, or even intends to. Uh -huh. So you're going to take up your flute again. Yeah, and, I attempt and, to take up my flute again. Okay. And in so doing, contributing infrequently and uh -huh. uh, less uh, carefully. Uh -huh. You're going to be the, the person who's mumbling the Star Spangled Banner. Watermelon, <laughs> watermelon, <laughs> watermelon, watermelon. Good. Uh, now, uh, all of the performers, you're in You're in the piece, right? It's, it's happening. You, you guys were rolling like crate i mean mm -hmm. so you're you're in there 
the 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 sound of Allison's flute hitting the platform, like it 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 jars. It, it was notable. Like it takes you not out of the experience, but it's it makes you a little bit aware again of where you are. Mm-hmm. Please, the rest of you, uh, actually, Allison too, all of you, please roll uh, spot hidden. And again, we mean in this case, notice. Mm, fail. Uh, nope, I'm two in the group. I rolled a zero nine. I don't know what happened here. I rolled fifty out of fifty, right on the knot on the dot. Um, Simon, you're looking around, uh, and the 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 small audience, the the grandees and the and the house staff, they are evidently enthralled you can see that that you know miss dewhurst the non-musical like she's her mouth's slightly open mm-hmm. and, and her position she's like a little slack jawed just a little um uh Herr Hellman, you notice that some of the attendees have begun to vocalize along with you but they 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 look entranced Mm -hmm. and there are no lyrics attached to this music but they're mouthing something Mm -hmm. that is in keeping it is in tempo with what what with the performance that's happening okay that's the first movement any any questions no 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 I think that we're all probably used to something going wrong during a concert and we just yep. focus uh-huh. and don't uh-huh. pay attention. Yeah, just keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Shit happens. There's always that cough on the third row during a really quiet moment. I it's told sad. Mark not to do that. And he just keeps doing it. Can't Sometimes. trust those marks. <laughs> <laughs> Why he comes to all my concerts. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to uh, roll for the second movement of the piece, and okay. we're going to do the same order. So Simon, Simon. Well, I passed, but it's an eighty-six this time. So regular. Okay. It's a lot so more you, difficult if, this. If one. you if you did not have a magical flute, you'd have. And that would have been a fail. There's a um, moment that sounds a little reedy, but you're fine. You're on it. Uh, regular success. Thank you, Mademoiselle Rafik. Mr. Hansen. Uh, this time is going to be a regular success. Okay. Back in this back in the flow. Uh, Mr. Woods. Just regular. Okay. It, and I, it, I I got a 24 under 75 for a hard success. Good. Um the uh the piece has gotten more complex. Even those of you who are playing again the repetition of the first page, uh-huh. you're hearing more than the five of you, as if this 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 you know this perfectly nice conservatory were somehow a, a more resident chamber. Or well, that's not even it. It's not just that you're hearing things that overlap. There's, it's. You're hearing a bit of a a drum beat, and you look hmm. around the room, and there's not. I mean, you can't see anybody physically, you know, no stamping their feet or anything. But it's the sound is getting fuller and more complex, and 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 that's not all. This is the moment where I pull out my printouts from the cat who just moved to lie on the printouts. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, Kitty, you probably should have saved us just now. <laughs> she tried to save you. Um, mm. As you approach the the end of the fifth page, at at the end, at the, which which closes the second movement, Mister Demarco uh, begins to levitate. He physically rises off the little stage that's been built in the conservatory. And 
spin counterclockwise. He just floats up and starts to turn with the music. Um, that'll require a sanity rolls, as you notice that. Uh, do I notice thing. it? You do notice it. I mean, you don't necessarily feel bad about it. Uh, fail, mm. but not by a lot. 98. I guess Ooh. I do. Oh, like Simon. Pass. <laughs> Zero three. Pass. Yeah, I passed as well. Uh, so uh, those who uh, succeeded, take take one little point of maybe you're in the middle of something so remarkable that it just doesn't seem real. Those of you who <laughs> failed, just a 1d3. Okay. That one's, no one's going to... Uh, oh, pfft. It's got to be some one, sort of stage Whatever. Tech. That's probably what I'm thinking. Uh, I got three. And uh, you, you know, I'm just, I'm just like, you, you know what? Sometimes you get and really into the groove. You feel like you're levitating. He really is. Whatever. I, yeah. I, I think at that failed sanity roll, I think Allison's done playing. I think that she's going to simply try to leave mid-performance. Good. Uh, Allison, in order to stop playing, you have to succeed in a power roll. Where's the <laughs> uh, Yeah, I think you had 45, right? And I rolled an 83. So, oh, yes. uh, so now you full on cold sweat, weak knees, and you don't feel like you're playing, you feel like you're being played. Uh, mm -hmm. the, your flute that you love is is pulling your fingers up Anyone and who down. looks at Allison will notice tears on her face uh, as she's playing. So beautiful. Yeah, that's distressing. Although who's even likely to look? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I mean, the I'm audience too much. Is. I'm too much in, in the zone. All right. So now we're we're partially compulsory. Uh, the audience is no less wrapped. Uh, if anybody feels sympathy toward Ellison's plight, they're not acting on it. Uh, and in fact, some of the the robed audience members are sort of leaning forward hungrily as the music continues to rise. Uh, and we're going to have the final act of the piece. Um, uh -huh. Simone is rotating a little faster. Um, nothing Thanks. is interfering with it. I just keep going. Yeah. Oh, uh, so the, you're, the, the you're, you're not rolling? Is, I, I imagine that if I am being supported, even if the gravity has gone, it still might feel like I'm sitting on something, I mean, even though there's nothing there. You don't feel, it's not, yeah, it's not a vertiginous experience. You're, you don't feel lightheaded or. You don't feel lightheaded. You don't feel light. You just feel elevated. And it's got to be a stage thing. There's yeah. something holding me up. I guess that, and because you're playing from the vellum sheet music, it's moving with you. Ah. Like you're a, you're at the centerpiece of this kind of profound. I mean, you've all had moments where you felt out of body because mm -hmm. the art was elevating you. This mm -hmm. is just a lot. Um, so we'll have a roll from 100% Simon just to see if something goes terribly awry. 35, which is a hard this time. So he is really bringing it to its conclusion. Hey. Okay. Uh, ooh, that is a hard. That was El Rafiq is is also feeling elevated. Uh, and putting aside whatever misgivings she has about what's going on. Uh, Allison, do you want to try another power roll to, to flee or stop? Um, I don't think her approach has changed. I think she will attempt to flee again. Sure. Uh, <laughs> that's a, another, my second 97. This game. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. And then, so oh. there's actually, um, as, 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 is it, as your fingers fly over, 
you're you're um even though it's the same it's the same p the same portion the front page that you're repeating it's going faster in a way that's dissonant and but it's not you and in fact uh you're starting to tear the flesh of your fingers Jesus. as they're <laughs> as they're driven to increase the the pace and 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 your you know your your soul is being bypassed by this course that's running through you um i guess we might as well do a sanity roll yes yeah. although you're not gonna leave uh that is actually a passive sanity somehow okay so you're yeah you, you, you part of you was reconciling with the fact that it's a piece of music and you can see that it's got an end uh-huh mm -hmm. uh mr woods uh may i push my failure you may i'm going to so to just find there, a push there will, I'm going... it, it will suck if you fail a push oh i'm sure but i'm gonna to, to push i'm going to refocus as i was starting to be distracted maybe by simon spinning and i'm just gonna refocus on my instrument and on my training and come on dice all right yeah that's a pass good work Re okay. regular yeah it it is weird that that he's levitating you might have also noticed ellison's tears and maybe maybe you didn't yeah. notice until there was a little bit of blood that flicked onto the stage next to you mm -hmm. but you you're in it you're going ahead mm -hmm. mr hellman uh i rolled a 40 and i will spend five luck to make that a hard success at 35 good you're you're uh you were uh, uh you all feel allison unhappily <laughs> you all feel that the piece is achieving a kind of culmination and the audience again leaning forward bright-eyed uh the maestro himself has begun to uh tap uh one hand against uh the uh the, the he's got a uh um little dais not dais uh -huh. a, a, a little, lectern little lectern yep where he's been he's tapping his his accent hand against it polyrhythmically uh -huh. and uh as the piece you know it's got, it's gotten faster as well as louder this crescendo is becoming and then the final series of tones six or seven harmony disharmonies actually uh -huh. play first simon who's gotten to spin kind of quickly his uh robes have vanished and you see the suit that he arrived in the limousine in and then that also is vanishing as he spins. And then <laughs> his hair and flesh seem to spin out into nothingness. And you see his muscles and sinew. And, and then those sort of also attenuate into the ether. And you see his skeleton spinning uh. around very quickly and there's an almost there's an anti-sound there's a little and he vanishes altogether does the flute go with him the flute goes with him and, and that was at the conclusion of the piece that is as his last reedy tone from the goethe flute Finish. and what level of agency do i have over after the piece ends um i you're free you're free screaming I mean, as loudly as i possibly can and <laughs> running that i i don't think the audience is going to mind like the as a group, the seated grandees have stood up and applauded the void into which Simone de Marco vanished. Um, 
uh, yeah, and the staff is applauding more politely, but the the rich folks are all thrilled. It was a, mm-hmm. it came off it came off beautifully. It was a success. I'm gonna chase Allison. I basically kind of have to sort of. I'm leaning against the lectern a little bit, like panting, because whew, that took a lot out of me. Took a lot out of a lot of people. Yeah. And I'll, uh, when I stop playing, I uh, kind of uh, look at the audience clapping and I uh, I go, uh, where'd, where'd DeMarco go? Uh, yeah. What? I sort of turn. Huh. He's he's gone. That's interesting. Hmm. And then I uh, start looking around like, uh, were we on a stage or playing on like the floor? There was a we- like an a eight inch okay, yeah, yeah. platform. I look down, you know, because like me, I've probably seen a magic show and I'm like, oh, maybe there's like some trick. <laughs> mm-hmm. I actually, uh, we should we should do sanity rolls for those of you who witnessed his disappearing, including Allison, before she fled. Although she's already at the sh- borderline. I was kind of thinking, given how well I I was playing, I was so in the zone I didn't notice. You, because he had the final few notes. Mm. You might have been completely absorbed and in it, but then part of that was turning to him as he go, you know, as he okay, yeah, that makes sense. And and also like his corpus dissolving and then vanishing into well, okay, yes, yes, okay. Pass. I failed. Pass. Pass one d three. Fail one d six. We'll see if anybody other than Allison. I lose six sanity. Okay. Ouch. Roll, roll, One, roll, roll intelligence then, please. All right. You plan uh, to follow Allison out of the building, so. 66. That is a failure. Good. Can I, uh, can I use luck on that? I can't no, use no, luck. You, you don't want to pass yeah. intelligence. You, you, wanna, you, you do not want to pass this, All trust right. me. All right. Yeah, I failed. Okay. So you take you take a hard you you were jarred to the bone. You can still run after Allison, who okay. fled screaming. Yep. Um, I mean, hmm. there's nowhere to go. So the staff right. will eventually collect everyone who fled unless they commit yeah. acts of violence. Mm-hmm. I thought, huh? Interesting. Uh, mm. For those but, uh... of you who remain in or near the stage. Mm-hmm. Uh. Again, you know, the, the audience applauded warmly, the maestro included. And in fact, it wasn't his, I mean, it, his tap against the lectern from before, it was a, a resounding, like, well done, sort of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and the uh, his, his man um, comes in with champagne, Stevens has. Uh, you are... Those of you who have not been elevated or broken are now members of the Sultan's courtiers. You are oh. connected to the best and brightest and most powerful people, uh, should you choose to, to so be. Uh, and the cham- champagne's very nice. Yes, and, and of course, you know, um, I'm like, uh, one moment, please. As I'm sipping my champagne, like, I need to sit down. <laughs> that took a lot out of me. I sit, sip the champagne and go, uh, if Simon's gone, do you need a uh, new lead fl- flautus? Well, uh, Mr. Woods, we have this uh, 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 uh some version of this celebration every year and always we need new talent and he and also every year we need a new instrument and he indicates the upper part of his right arm 
Meanwhile, oh, that's so dark. <laughs> I thought so. Mr. DeMarco, the final note as you played it, you your eyes are closed, you're hearing it completely. You open your eyes and you're in an absolute void. And time passes, perhaps a great deal of time. You can't do anything. There's nothing to be done. You're just looking at nothing. And there's a roar and a brightness. And you feel yourself turning in this void. And as you turn, you hear the ascension melody as a, as a harmonic ocean of agonizing sounds and the piping goes higher and higher and the drum beats become more mindless and vicious and you spin toward this light and the light reaches into and at you and beams well reds of light push into your eyes and pluck them out and into your mouth and you are part of the court of the demon sultan forever you'll play the goethe flute amongst the bad pipers and wild drummers in the void at the center of the cosmos exactly what i wanted <laughs> i thought it was going to be jesus <laughs> i mean that. i I, cr I couldn't decide whether it was going to be king in yellow or yogsafoth so thank you <laughs> Oh, I thought the second that it was a flute, it would have something to do with Azathoth. Yeah, um, Azathoth, but yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, amazing. Yay! So do yeah. I have to give my arm, or do I have to find someone else to give? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a good question. But mm. every year, somebody's giving up a forearm, a right forearm. That was a nice was. revelation. That I never so saw good. that coming. That was so good. Right at the end with one line. Just beautifully crafted. Rafi Interestingly, I, uh, I say Rafi <laughs> in, the, in the scenario was published, they're all missing. They're, they're, the three people are missing right forearms. And it says that the flute is made of bone. It never says that it's a forearm bone. Mm-hmm. I just think that they forgot to mention yeah. it. Yeah. It's no, I mean, think it was very tragically. good that you didn't tell us. Yeah, that was yeah, awesome. Definitely. We were thinking animal bone. We were thinking walrus tusk, something. It was that know. perfect was like, dark twist. It was like, it can't be too big. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have to be a, yeah. an elephant's femur. Yeah. It can just be, you know, a bone, like maybe that long. Yeah. yeah about that long right there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, and so Allison and Hellman will, you know, you can, you're part of the secret society if you choose to be, if you can tolerate it. I don't want to die. Fact, <laughs> well, and yeah, do you don't want to win the competition you've learned? <laughs> or you do. I mean, mm -hmm. it was interesting What's... the way he evaporated. Yeah, we don't know he's dead. So what benefits to the people who are members of the club? They've got access to all these rich people and mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and you know any performance hall we want to go to, we now can get into. Sure. You know, we've got patrons, we've got connections, we've got friends in very high places. Mm -hmm. Illuminati style. It's not as even... not as high as my new friends. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's arguably the case that these people are providing a benefit to the universe yeah. by keeping the demons As asleep. asleep. Mm -hmm. I think but that, that's... I think for guys. Allison, she actually will not join. Uh, but, but she'll join, she'll feign to join, but continually try to run from them as far as the ends of the earth that she can get. But probably they have foreseen her attempt. 
Well, or so, you will have a sequel where you start yes. a, a society in opposition. Yes. So I am curious what everybody's thing was. Mine was simply that I was ruthless. Um, ambitious. So as long as I survived the today, there was absolutely no way I wasn't joining. Yeah, the, the we Sultan. thought you were all coked yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my ambition, I my trait is uh, my only goal is to become the principal flautist in the uh, New York Symphony. That's why I was like, oh, well, he's gone. So <laughs> yep. I, I think you just got promoted there. That's right. Yep. Achievement. <laughs> I take it, Allison, your trait is nervous. No, actually, I I sort of I'm turning blurry again. Let me just. Uh, yeah, no, actually, my interpretation of the character was it's ambitious to realize your destiny and play before the great and powerful. But I, I my interpretation of the character was that once she realized that something was not what she wanted, she changed mm-hmm. her mind. Yeah, right, right. Because uh, actually, my ambitious was to take center stage in the great counts- concert halls of the world, mm. which I. I've just, I've just, all I had to do was play one piece and I've, I've achieved my wildest yeah. dreams. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was supposed to come up with some nasty rumor about Alex Hellman. So I Ooh. figured I'd just spread it around that she slept with everybody. <laughs> and, and actually, funny enough, my first thought, Alex, I was supposed to come up with a rumor about Allison. My first thought had been, because again, this is the 20s, that she, you know, she slept with the, Direct with the conductor to get into sure. the, the the orchestra, but then I saw her ideology. She, she's a women's rights activist, and I'm like, nope, she wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, more so, power so, to her. So yeah. so 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 then it Good became job. alcohol. Yeah. Al- so, so then it became, it, it became <laughs> alcoholic. <laughs> That's great. Now, like, I thought a fun one for spreading a rumor would be that Simon has literally killed people in du- duels. So uh, yeah. I, that was my attempt. Though I was kind of bad at communicating it. But well, actually, you had it worked out really about, well. You had something about me being bloodthirsty, though, on your sheet? No, no, no. no not to on make sheet. up a rumor, yeah. That was just part of the rumor. Yeah. yeah. Because it literally says on my sheet that I'm bloodthirsty. Yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. So I free. I kind of was like, wait a second. Is there more that's on my sheet that I didn't <laughs> read? That's Am hilarious. I bloodthirsty? <laughs> so, oh, my, not yeah. myself. So, how yeah, about that Cody? Was- yeah, so that. Oh, sorry, go on. Uh, oh. I had a rumor to make up about Mr. Woods, and yep. also just ambitious. Just really wanted to be the best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Let me go ahead and finish it. We can talk about it more after. Okay. Our players. Oh, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Oh, my thing <laughs> didn't suddenly, record yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that has happened. Good God. Our players included Jen Obertaz, uh, Cody McInnes, uh, Chase Kapner, Keith Craig, and myself with David Gasway as the Keeper of the Secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members. You can set up private games. You can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you would like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.